Hey guys, Dempsey here, and as we all know, 2019 is finally over, thank God. But, with a brand new year on the horizon, that means there are tons of new films to look forward to. Some that I'm especially excited for, and some that you guys might not even be aware are coming out. Regardless, today I wanted to share my most anticipated films of 2020 with you. So, what do you say we begin? Now, before we start, as always, I just want to make sure you hit that like button if you like this video and to please hit that subscribe button or consider hitting it anyway if you're not already subscribed. I post new videos like this weekly, well, movie related videos anyway. Most of the time I do movie reviews and I do do the occasional trailer reaction, but that's all I'm going to say on that right now. There are a lot of movies that I want to cover in this video and I apologize in advance if this video is on the lengthier side, once again, because there are a lot of things that I want to talk about, but let's jump right into it with the first film and, um... One more thing before I start, of course, these are not in any ranked order. I will be discussing them in the chronological order that they are scheduled to be released. Uh, that is, unless they don't have a release date, then I'll save them for the very end. But the very first film that I'm looking forward to this year is Underwater. The film stars Kristen Stewart, TJ Miller, and a slew of other A-listers as a group of underwater researchers who become stranded below the surface, I don't want to say underwater again, after a mysterious creature attacks their ship. Now, does it sound like it's been done before? Hell yeah, absolutely, but the trailer makes it look like an all-out thrill ride, and that's what I'm really excited for. That's why it's on the list. Now, I also know it's a January release. It actually comes out this upcoming Friday, but, you know, I'm holding out hope. Okay, I really am. Next up, Fantasy Island. While this film might be from the same exact person who brought us that god-awful Truth or Dare movie a couple years ago, I must say I'm still kind of intrigued because I, I need to know how Blumhouse is going to take this iconic TV property and turn it into a horror franchise. I mean, the trailer does kind of make it look like Saw 2 in a way where each terror is tailored for each person, but I guess, good or bad, I'm, I'm just really eager to unravel the mystery at the center of it all. The New Mutants. I cannot believe that this film is actually coming out. Well, for now anyway, because it's changed before. <laughs> God only knows. In all seriousness, though, I'm really eager to see this movie, but for a lot of different reasons this time around. And that's what I don't think a lot of people will realize, is that the context of this film's release is totally different than it was last time. For one, Disney owns Fox now, and Fox's X-Men franchise is effectively over. So, and I'm not... Confirming anything, I definitely don't have the power to confirm anything, but throwing out the possibility, because the possibility is absolutely there, that we could be in store for some really cool Easter eggs or crossovers, I don't know. Could this film take place in the MCU? Once again, I don't know. What I do know is that I will definitely be in line to see this film the first day of its release. No time to die. James Bond returns for his 25th adventure, and while I have no idea what the hell is going on anymore, I think I speak for everyone when I say that I'm still pretty excited to see what Daniel Craig has up his sleeve in his last lap as the character. Yes, you heard correct. This is Daniel Craig's last time playing James Bond, and while we're all sad, we all know that it's just eventually going to be recasted anyway. Maybe it'll be Idris Elba next time, you know, I'm still rooting for that, but in the meantime, this film looks like it has everything. Returning Bond girls with the addition of one Anna de Armas. Uh, returning villains with the addition of one Freddie Mercury. Sorry, Mr. Robot, what was I thinking? Um, this film looks so hyped that I might actually go back and rewatch all the films leading up to it. JK, I'm actually trying to keep my sanity this decade. Black Widow. Okay, so Nat is dead, and this film is confirmed to be taking place after the events of Civil War. But, why tell it now? I have this crazy theory, emphasis on the word crazy, that this film is going to be some sort of Trojan horse for some grand storyline that's going to carry us over into the next saga in the MCU. Alright, I know it sounds ridiculous, okay, once again, crazy, but why are we going into the past? There has to be some greater reason. Kevin Feige knows what I'm talking about. That guy has something up his sleeve. I'm calling it right now. <laughs> Scooby Dooby Doo is set to make his return to the big screen later on this year in his own feature film called Scoob, but that's not the main reason why I'm excited. 
This film is apparently supposed to set up a Hanna-Barbera cinematic universe. And I know we're all tired of all the interconnected characters across films and whatnot, but, I mean, we're talking about Hanna-Barbera here. And for those of you guys who don't know who or what Hanna-Barbera is, please look it up. I mean, they own a catalog of some of the most classic cartoons. I'm talking about the Flintstones, the Jetsons, Yogi Bear, the Smurfs. Not that we're ready for the Smurfs again just yet, but... I mean, this film, if done right, could lead to endless possibilities. And I'm talking about some really great ones that I think the next generation of kids could really benefit from. The Organ Donor. Sounds spooky, right? Well, it is a horror film, but judging by the title, you probably wouldn't be able to figure out that it's also a sequel in one of horror's biggest franchises. And that, of course, is Saw. Yes. This film is said to be the ninth installment in the Saw franchise, but before you roll your eyes and shrug your shoulders, let me just say that this film wouldn't even be possible if it wasn't for Chris Rock. Yeah, that Chris Rock. He actually pitched the story and even stars in the film alongside, of all people, Samuel L. Jackson. The surprises keep on coming, right? Mark your calendars, guys, because I have a really good feeling about this one. Fast and Furious 9. Title tentative, by the way. No one knows what Dom Toretto and gang could possibly do next or where they could even go next except for maybe outer space. But one thing is for certain, whenever a new entry in this billion dollar franchise drops, it's an event. And with Cardi B and John Cena joining the cast and Ryan Reynolds and Kevin Hart now a part of the cinematic universe after Hobbs and Shaw, sorry if you haven't seen the movie, spoiler alert, late spoiler alert, um, who knows what the hell we're going to see. Literally anything could happen. I mean, like, like I said before, we don't even have a title to the movie yet. This movie's just one giant surprise waiting to be dropped on our lap. What do you guys think the movie will be called, by the way? If you have any ideas, let me know in the comment section down below. In the Heights. Before Hamilton, there was In the Heights. Lin-Manuel Miranda's love letter to both Latinos and New York City. I actually saw it on Broadway when it was on Broadway, and I, I just remember falling in love with it. It's such a beautiful story. It's beautiful music. It's... Incredible. And now there's a movie coming out. I mean, bold words about to come out of my mouth, but this might actually be one of my most, if not my most anticipated movie of the year. And to paint you a picture, okay, West Side Story also comes out this year, and it's not on this list. Yeah, that's how much I love this movie. Like, uh, I, originally I was worried because of the director. The director is John M. Chu, and his only good film, I mean, if you look at his filmography, is Crazy Rich Asians. But after finding out that Lin-Manuel Miranda was at the helm as a producer, I feel a lot more confident. And after watching the trailer, I'm just especially excited. Like, it looks like everything I want it to be and more. Mark your calendars, guys. Free guy. Now, of all the other films on this list, I think this one in particular I have the most insight on, just because when I went to New York Comic Con this past year, I went to the panel where Sean Levy, the director of the film, and Ryan Reynolds were there, and uh, not only did they show us a lot of footage, but they gave us a lot of insight into the movie. For those of you guys who haven't seen the trailer, uh, just a little background on the movie, Ryan Reynolds essentially plays a non- a uh, playable character, an NPC in a video game, and he becomes sentient and self-aware, and then he kind of forges his own path within the video game that he's in, and then it sparks all these other repercussions throughout um, uh, the game and the outside world. And um, I don't know, something tells me that this film is going to be a surprising hit, um, just, just because of the scope that they painted for it. And some would argue that um, the character that Ryan Reynolds plays, especially the self-aware aspect behind it, is similar to some of the other stuff that he's done, especially Deadpool, but I don't know. Um, it, yeah, it is kind of reminiscent of some of those characters, but at the same time, it's something totally different and something that I'm very excited for. Um, think Ready Player One, but just maybe with a lot more comedy. Tenet. I mean, if you haven't seen the trailer for this movie, or even my trailer reaction, which, by the way, link in the description box below, this movie's gonna be massive. I mean, I don't know how he does it, but Christopher Nolan aims to outdo himself yet again, and, I mean, he never disappoints. I don't know what this movie's about. I don't care what it's about. All I know is that I want it. I, no, I need it, and I need it now. Bob's Burgers, the movie. What can the Belchers possibly do that they haven't already done? Make a movie. That's what. This year, we are getting a Bob's Burgers movie. 
I'm a little bit salty just because I've been waiting for a Family Guy movie for a very long time, but at the same time, I'm pretty excited just because the show and just the characters in general are hilarious. So I'm eager to see what kind of shenanigans they bring to the big screen. Now, while there aren't too many plot details known at this time, I have some pretty reliable sources that say that this movie will most likely be a musical. So there's that to look forward to. And speaking of music, Bill and Ted face the music. America's favorite interdimensional stoners are back. And after decades of development, not only are Keanu Reeves and Alex Winter returning to reprise their roles as Bill and Ted, but they're also returning to combat some force that's beyond their control. I mean, that's just what they do. This threequel actually revolves around them being plucked from their, believe it or not, boring adult lives to try and save the world. And uh, along the way, they meet some new friends, and uh, they even bump into some old ones as well, especially the Grim Reaper. I'm super excited for this one. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, now's the perfect time to brush up, because the originals are fantastic, and this one, I have a really good feeling about. The Many Saints of Newark. Just when I thought I was out, they pull me back in. Literally. This is a prequel to The Sopranos. Let that sink in. And it's not coming out on HBO. It's coming out in theaters this year. Never mind the fact that it's directed by Alan Taylor, who did these two stinkers. It's written by David Chase, who, for fans of the original show, you know he created it. With a cast consisting of Alessandro Novola, who has been brilliant in so many supporting roles for the past couple years. Now he's a lead, right? John Bernthal. Vera Farmiga, Corey Stoll, and Ray Liotta. I mean, you have to be excited. I'm especially eager to see how things were before Tony Soprano. Oh man, I can't wait. Last Night in Soho. Edgar Wright has been out of the limelight for the past couple years, but this year he's back with Last Night in Soho, which is said to be his first horror film since Shaun of the Dead, and his first seemingly dark film or film with a darker tone. Plot details are said to contain some time travel elements, and the film stars Anya Taylor-Joy and Jojo Rabbit breakout Thomas and McKenzie. It all sounds very out there, but if there's one director I can trust with out there, it's Edgar Wright. I'm very eager to see what he's cooked up this time around. The Trial of the Chicago 7. This film has been in development hell for years. I mean, I remember at one point Steven Spielberg was set to direct with Will Smith attached to Star, and that was over a decade ago. Not trying to date myself, though, okay? Um, this incredible true story follows seven different men from seven very different backgrounds who are charged with inciting a riot and a historic trial and effort to exonerate them that took place afterwards. And, I mean, there are a lot of things that got me excited about this film. I mean, like I said, I've been following it for years, but for one thing, Aaron Sorkin is behind the camera. And, I mean, I loved Molly's game. I trust the guy implicitly with telling the story. We all know that he's a magnificent writer, but in addition to him being a part of the project, we also have the incredible cast. Sasha Baron Cohen is starring. Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Yahya Abdul-Mateen II. I mean, come on, anybody see Watchmen lately? If you want to see the rest of the cast, I highly recommend you either wait or check out the Wikipedia page. But either way, this film has Oscars written all over it. The Eternals. Yes, we're getting New Mutants and Black Widow this year, but honestly, I think that the Marvel film that people are going to be talking about the most at the end of 2020 is The Eternals. And the only reason I honestly say that is because it's the one that we know the least about. Obviously, no trailer. We do know the cast, like Kit Harington, Gemma Chan, um, Angelina Jolie, but we don't know anything about the plot. We don't know who the bad guy is. The only thing that we really know is that it takes place in the distant galaxy. So, I mean, technically, you could say that the possibilities are eternal. Godzilla vs. Kong. This is the only movie on this list that I'm equally excited and nervous for. Just because I really enjoyed the most recent Godzilla movies, but I also really hated that one Kong one that they did. Like, I, I feel like this film does have the potential to be bad. But I'm hoping at the same time that the producers know what's at stake and are doing everything in their power to ensure that this film is more than financially successful. I mean, I think that if done right, this film could establish the MonsterVerse as the next great cinematic universe. That is, unless, you know, the Hanna-Barbera one does really well. And I'm pulling for that one, too. You already know that. Escape Room 2. 
This might come as a surprise, but I actually enjoyed the first film a lot, even though the ending sucked. <laughs> um, I really liked the puzzle-solving aspect of it. I thought it was kind of fresh, even though a lot of people compared it to Saw. Um, personally, I'm just a huge fan of Escape Rooms. I like that kind of critical thinking aspect. And it actually had you kind of thinking along with the characters. I think that's what I really am trying to say that I liked about it. Uh, I hope that this next film expands upon the mythology of the company behind it. And uh, I don't know. I, I think that this movie, this series, has the potential to be a pretty sustainable horror franchise, if done right. Dune. Two words. Denis Villeneuve. I know nothing about Dune. I never read any of the books. I saw the original film. I hated it, okay, despite it being directed by David Lynch. This is one of the best directors working today. Coming fresh off a sequel to one of the greatest films of all time that in itself might be one of the greatest films of all time. I mean, you don't even have to tell me who's in the cast, even though we know it's Timothy Chalamet, Josh Brolin, Zendaya. I mean, should I even go on? I pledge my allegiance to this film. Army of the Dead. Zack Snyder's next project is set to hit Netflix later on this year, but while we don't know too much about it, we do know two things for sure. One, it's a heist film involving zombies, and two, it features an ensemble cast led by Dave Bautista. I, for one, am excited, just because before DC, before Watchmen, before all the comic book adaptations, Zack Snyder gave the world Dawn of the Dead, the remake. That was his very first film. So in a sense, he's kind of returning to his roots here with this one. And if this film is even a shred as good as Dawn of the Dead, then I think we're all in for a treat. Blonde. Also slated for Netflix later on this year is Blonde, which is a fictionalized account of Marilyn Monroe's life, directed by Andrew Dominic. Now, if you haven't heard of him, he directed this really great movie a couple years back called The Assassination of Jesse Jackson by the coward Robert Ford. Highly recommend it if you've never seen it. Really good movie. Um, but the thing that actually attracted me to this film is not the director, not the plot synopsis, but the star. The person who they actually got to play Marilyn Monroe is Anna Diarmas, who is from Knives Out. She's going to be in the new James Bond movie, as I mentioned earlier on in this video. Until I saw her with the blonde hair, I could not picture as Marilyn Monroe. But if you see the set photos, and I, I think I'll, I'll attach some of them right here so you can check them out, the resemblance is uncanny. But other than that, I don't really know too much about the film. And with Dominic's involvement, I have a feeling that Netflix is going to hold off on releasing the film until award season. But nevertheless, I think you should keep it on your radar. Now, finally, the last film on my list of most anticipated films of 2020. We are here, and I'm sorry it probably took so long. I probably lost so many of you guys. Hopefully not. But the last film that I'm looking forward to in 2020 is a film called The Sound of Metal. And believe it or not, this film was almost not on this list. The only reason that I actually decided to include it was because I, I was looking and I really couldn't find if it was released theatrically anywhere. All I know is that Amazon has the rights and it was released at TIFF last year to rave reviews. And essentially the film follows Riz Ahmed, um, love Riz Ahmed, one of my favorite actors working today. He plays a drummer in a heavy metal band that starts to lose his hearing. So immediately when I heard Riz Ahmed was on it, I was totally on board. But when I heard the plot, I was like, it sounds incredible. So yeah, uh, as far as I can tell, hasn't been released theatrically. I could be wrong, but if any of you guys know something that I don't know, maybe I missed, let me know in the comment section down below. The bottom line is that I just really want to see this movie. But yeah, these were my most anticipated films of 2020. That is my list. If there are some films that I made you aware of that you weren't aware of before, or if there are some films that you were surprised that didn't make my list that you thought I, I would be excited for, or even if there are films that you're excited for that you think, I should be excited for that I have no idea about. Let me know all that good stuff in the comments section down below. Um, once again, if you like this video, please make sure you hit that like button and also make sure you subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And uh, yeah, once again, or as always, you know, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to view this video, especially this video. I know it was on the lengthier side and I appreciate everybody who stood by and made it this far. Um, it really means the world. Um, I love sharing my thoughts. I love talking movies with any and all of you guys that are willing to listen. Um, one final announcement. I am currently in the process of finalizing my best of uh, or, or my, my favorite films of the decade and favorite films of 2019. Um, you should expect those videos within the next week or so. Uh, so be on the lookout for them. And also my review of The Grudge, which will also be coming out in the next couple of days. Uh, so make sure you stay tuned. Uh, but yeah, that's it. I won't take up any more of your time. 
Until next time, I'm Dempsey Pallott. Take care.